not that my family is so healthy and successful. My only comfort is that I belong body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. That's how we face suffering. Um, Elizabeth Elliot was a well-known uh, missionary. You, you may have heard her story or read a number of her books that she's written. She tells a story. This was very early in her ministry. She went into, I believe, into South America. She wasn't yet married. And she was trying to bring the gospel to a very remote little village in the Amazon jungle. And the key to doing that, of course, was to find someone that she could communicate with so that they could speak the language and then slowly over time translate the gospel into the local language. God provided someone who could speak the language. It was nothing short of a miracle. And so hope looked great. It looked like they'd be able to bring the gospel into this little remote village. And then that one person, that key person, was murdered. And all of a sudden it looked like we can't finish this work that we set out to do. Now they had some note cards and they had some research that had already been done and so the thinking was, well, maybe we can, you know, it's going to take years to rebuild, but maybe we could still move forward. It wasn't long after that and flooding and theft took away all their note cards. Years of work down the drain. There was really no hope from that point on. So Elizabeth Elliot returned home. It was around that time she got married to Jim Elliot. Maybe you know the story. Her and her husband Jim and five others went into Central America, I believe Ecuador, to bring the gospel to a different group of people. And over time they built up this relationship with this little tribe in Central America and they decided it was time to go in and bring the gospel now to meet these people face to face. Up until that time they'd only had contact from a distance. The night before, they sing a song trusting in Jesus. And they go, the men, Jim Elliott, Nate Saint, and um, I forget the other two, but it doesn't really matter at this point. They go to the tribe to meet them face to face. Some of you know the story. They were all murdered. And Elizabeth Elliott writes about that, and she says, you know, the temptation is to look for a silver lining here. To tack on a happy ending to say that, well, these men died, so now God is going to convert them. And Elizabeth Elliot says, maybe, maybe not, but that's not the point. And she went on and she wrote, uh, she wrote this. She says, this was, this was her trust. She says, those hands that keep a million worlds from spinning into oblivion were nailed motionless to a cross for us. Can you trust him? Can you trust the one whose hands were nailed to the cross and suffered for you? Let's pray. Lord, in this world, we are not immune to pain and to loss. And we thank you that you are not a God that demands that we deny our pain or pretend that somehow suffering is just an illusion, or that suffering is just something that we somehow deserve. You are a God who enters into our suffering and shares our pain with us. But you're also a God who uses suffering redemptively, maybe in ways that we will never fully understand on this side of heaven. But indeed, if you were nailed to a cross for us, Lord, help us to trust you. In Christ we pray. Amen.